In this video, we'll show you how to set up your Cloud9 environment to run a Ruby on Rails app. Now, before you watch this video, I'm assuming that you have been able to set up your AWS account and been able to log in and get to the AWS Management Console. So that information on how to set up and get your account will be uh, given either in another video or another page. So once you're at the AWS Management Console, you can uh, type here Cloud um, Cloud9, and you'll see it, and you can select it from the drop-down list. And you'll be here on your Cloud9 uh, dashboard, and you go ahead and just click Create Environment. Now, the name of the environment, you can name it after the, our class, CS401. And just any description you want, CS4 will run Ruby on Rails. And then after that, uh, you just click Next Step. Now it's really important, we want to use, uh, we do want to create a new EC2 instance for this. So that's basically a Linux machine in the cloud that you will be able to work on. And so it'll create you a virtual machine in Amazon's cloud that you can work on. We want the smallest one. If you select a bigger one, then that might charge you money. So make sure you've selected this uh, micro instance right here. And then finally, another thing we want to do Ubuntu server so that we can use Ubuntu's uh, management system. And uh, you probably want to leave this uh, after 30 minutes to have it shut down. You don't need to uh, set up anything else. Now you can click next step. And uh, finally, uh, you could just review, make sure that you're using the T2 micro instance and that we're using Ubuntu as well. You also probably want to check this. This will hopefully save your money or credits. And um, then uh, finally, uh, they do warn you we're going to have to use Git to back up our code frequently. And uh, we're also going to have to update our software, which I'll show you how to do. And let's go ahead and create our environment. Now this will take a while for it to get created. And once it gets created, you land on this page. And again, it takes about three or four minutes for your environment to get created. So just be a little patient. If maybe after 10 minutes it hasn't shown up, then uh, you might have a problem. But make sure you are a little bit patient. And also another thing with the browser you're using, make sure that you uh, allow cookies um, and cross-site cookies uh, one browser that doesn't work really well with AWS is the Safari browser. It has some anti-tracking, automated anti-tracking that deletes cookies, and that makes it not work uh, very well in Safari. But Chrome and Firefox should work pretty, pretty well as long as you haven't installed a bunch of ad blockers and uh, other stuff that blocks, uh, blocks the cookies from getting installed. So here is our terminal window or our command prompt. Uh, it's called command prompt in Windows. In Linux, it's called a terminal window. And hopefully you're used to using one of these. If not, look for a link to the video to kind of learn some stuff. But basically, we have um, over here our folders. By the way, this folder is slash home slash Ubuntu slash environment. It, they call it CS401. That's the name I gave it. But it's really the environment folder. And that is the folder we are on here. So you could do a ls to list out the files. And you can see, yep, we got that readme file. Now this .c9, anything that starts with a period, is a hidden folder. So that's not why we didn't see it down here. So um, if we want to go to our home folder or up a folder, we could go cd dot dot goes up a folder. And if we want to go into a folder, just cd environment. And uh, you, another thing, uh, you could just type the first few letters and press tab and it should complete the rest of it. So I'm not a super fast typer. I just press tab and it auto completes it. So hopefully um, you can get used to that um, right there. Now, the first thing we want to do is update our virtual Linux machine in the cloud. Now we're using Ubuntu and um, unlike uh, Windows and Mac, where there's not one company that um, distributes software, this is an open source operating system. So what you could do is you can download the source for Linux and compile it. And then you can download the source for all the other software uh, packages that you want to do. Now, the hard thing is, is there's a lot of dependencies. So let's say that we want to install one program. 
that might mean that we have to install five dependencies. And each one of the dependencies might depend on other things, and we won't have to install that. So there's Linux distributions that make it easy to install all of the dependencies so we don't have to download the source code and compile it. And Ubuntu is built off of a distribution called Debian, and Debian uses the apt uh, package manager to be able to install um, software. So uh, the one thing we want to do, sudo, and just so you know, sudo means we're going to use the root user account. And so um, that's for only commands we're changing the system. So uh, only to install software and update will we use sudo in this class. Um, and maybe you might use sudo to configure stuff as well. But then we could just go apt update. And this will download to see if there are any new updates. And then we can go sudo apt upgrade. So uh, slightly different, almost the same word. And that is to actually install these. And so um, if, it, if it says it's locked, just give it a, a few minutes. Sometimes uh, the, the Ubuntu or AWS Cloud9 will be trying to update some things in the background. If it's locked, just give it a couple minutes and try sudo apt upgrade again. And now it's these are all the new things that we can install on it. If you want to continue, we could click Y. If you notice the Y is capitalized, that means if I just press Enter, that's the default. And so it'll take you a couple minutes to install all of the updates. Okay, now that we've installed all the updates, let's go ahead and set up our SSH keys with GitHub. So remember, GitHub's going to be the backup of our code. It's going to uh, keep track of our history. Hopefully, you've learned a little bit about GitHub already. So um, we'll be following a, a guide that GitHub gives us in order to set up our SSH keys. Now. Um, once we log into GitHub, you can go down here and we can go to our settings. And from our settings, we should see SSH and GPG keys. And then uh, there's this uh, generating SSH keys as a little guide. So you can follow this guide, but um, you already don't have SSH keys, so you don't really need to check for that. But we can go ahead and generate a new SSH key right here. And here's an article for Linux. Um, and uh, basically, we open the terminal window and we run this command right here. So go ahead and paste that in your terminal and then fix the email address so it's your email address and then press enter and it will generate you an our, uh, a SSH key pair. Um, for which file to save the key, we'll just press uh, enter uh, and keep the default. And then this password, please, please don't forget it or else you have to just regenerate a new um, SSH key. What this is for is in case anyone steals your SSH key, they just can't use it. They also have to know the password. So that will create you a new SSH key. Now this part is a little bit optional, but if you don't want to have to type in your password every time you uh, push a commit to GitHub, you can run this command and that's an SSH agent. And then uh, that this just makes sure it's running. Don't worry if you have a different number here, you probably will. That's the process ID number, and it'll be different on every computer. Uh, and even if you reboot your computer, it'll be different. And then the SSH add will add the key. It'll ask you for your password. So you type in your password, press enter, and that will keep it. Now, you still want to remember this password in case you need to move this key to a new machine. So you might want to write it down somewhere or put it in a password manager so that you do not forget this password. Now we just need to copy our public key and give that to GitHub. So by the way, what this is going to do is now that we have this key pair, if I give the public key to GitHub, GitHub can verify that uh, it, it really is me whenever I try to push a commit up to them. And that's how we're going to get away from having to type in a password or even a username. GitHub can automatically identify me by knowing my public key as long as I keep my private key private. So to be able to get the public key, just type cat, and then we'll do this tilde. You usually shift by the one key on a US keyboard, you got that tilde. What that means is the home directory. So in our home directory, there's another hidden folder called SSH where this, uh, these keys are stored, if you notice that right there. Um, and then you just do id underscore rsa.pub. Now there is another file called id 
underscore RSA without the dot pub, and that is your private key. You don't want to give your private key to anybody. You want to keep it private, but we can give our public key to whoever we want, and then they can use that to verify that it really is us. So um, once they do that, it'll print out all of this on a clipboard. So you can go ahead and copy it. And then go back to GitHub and we're gonna paste it in. So once again, to find this page, you go to your settings over here and you got the SSH and GPG keys. And from there, we just click add our new SSH key. Now you can give it a name since we're doing this on cloud nine, we can give it a name and then paste in everything that you copied. And then by pasting it in, you'll now have the new cloud nine uh, key added there into GitHub so that GitHub knows your public key. Now, finally, we can test our connection with uh, this command right here. And um, when you press enter, it might, it'll ask you if you, um, if you uh, trust this connection, and since this is the first time we're connecting to GitHub, we can go ahead and say, yes, we trust this connection. And, um, and notice it said you're successfully authenticated, and that means that our GitHub key worked. Now that we have our SSH key set up, all we need to do is install the development tools we'll be using in this class. To do that, you just do sudo apt install build essential. Now, after you've installed the development tools, you can test it by just typing GCC, which is a C compiler. And if it says no input files, then you know at least there is a GCC program installed on your computer. You can also do G++, which is a C++ compiler, and you get the same thing, but now you know that you have a G++ compiler on your machine. So after you've done that, uh, take a screenshot of this, just type your name here, and then take a screenshot showing that you have both of these programs installed and that, and with your name here as proof that you've got your AWS uh, Cloud9 environment set up.